Hi, welcome back to our series on developing Game Boy games in C with the Game Boy Developer Kit. If you've been following us this far, in the last lesson we showed you how to draw your own kind of character, how to show that on the screen and how to animate it by just kind of moving it across the screen. But for a game you need to actually let the user be able to control your character. So in this video we're going to show you the basics of how to just animate your character across the screen using the joypad just with up and down like this. By the end of it, you should be able to get your own character on the screen moving however you want to do it. Let's get started with some code. So if you've been following the series, you'll see that the last episode we showed you how to draw your own sprite and display it onto the screen. And so that's what I've got the code up here. Today, we're actually gonna show you how to move your sprite but using the joypad. So previously we just showed you how to animate it. So if I build last episode's code with the dot backslash make dot mat, and I go and open up the emulator and load that again, you'll see he just moves across the screen and animates his kind of smiley and frowny face. So today I'm gonna to show you as if it was your main character, how you can steer that around the screen. So most of the code we're gonna keep here, we're gonna load in the sprites like we did before. I'm not gonna go through that again. Um, but what we've got here in our loop, in our game loop, this while one, we're gonna change quite a lot of the code here. So for now, I'm gonna take away the animating smiley face and we're just gonna worry about moving it. So we aren't going to need to change the sprite tile, but we are going to need to scroll the sprite and we will need a delay. So I'm gonna leave that bit of code there and we'll move it in a moment when we need to. So on the Game Boy Developer Kit, it has a function called joypad. It's a function, if you want to call it, you have to put these open brackets, close brackets after it. And when I call that, it will figure out whether anyone is pressing the joypad at the moment. And if it is, it will return a value for whether they're doing it left, right, up or down. So if they were pressing it left, right, up or down, then actually it would bring back uh, this J underscore left. So these are called constants, they're built into the Game Boy Developer Kit. There's one for left, right, up, down, select and start. And what we need to do is write some code that can work out when we're pressing left to do one thing, when we're pressing right to do another, and all the way through. So what we're gonna use for that is called a switch statement. So pretty much every language has one of these. Um, it's a good way of writing different code depending on what the value of something is. So we're gonna write switch, we open our brackets, and what we're looking for is different options for the value of joypad. So I'm gonna paste that in there. So switch joypad, open curly braces and close curly braces. So that's the switch statement, empty but complete. Now we have to write the bit inside it that says if it's left. Um, so we don't use ifs and elses in a switch statement. We use something called case. So if case j left, I put the underscore in and then we put a colon in the end. So that says if joypad up here is k is j left, then I want you to do the bit of code we're gonna write under here. Um, it's good practice just to put a tab in, just indent your, your code here so you can read what it's doing. So when I press left on the joypad, I want to scroll my sprite left on the screen. So if I bring that scroll sprite code back in, somewhere I've messed up my indenting, there you go. So if the top left hand corner of the Game Boy screen is pixel zero, zero, and we want to move left, we need to go negative in the X direction, so in the horizontal direction. So we're gonna put minus 10. I could make this minus one and it will move one pixel for every time it comes through this loop and I'm pressing left, but 10 seems to be a more sensible kind of amount. So we're gonna indent that. So when joypad's left, scroll the sprite minus 10, and then at the end of each case statement, we need a special um, call, a special method called break that will exit out of that switch. Now we've handled J left, we don't want to do any more. We're just gonna come straight out and carry on with any code that we've got down here. So you just do the same for all the other directions on the joypad. So case J right. And the joypad can only be in one direction at a time. So we don't have to worry about the code on there. And when we go right, we want to go 10 to the right on the screen. And then J up. 
So up again is going to be a negative number, but it's not going to be in the x horizontal. It's going to be in the y vertical, so minus 10. And j down. Which is going to add 10 to the y-axis. So basically this code now says if joypad is j left, do this. If it's j right, do this. If it's up, do this. If it's down, do this. Um, so you could write that with lots of ifs and elses, but it's messy. So a switch statement is a nicer way to do that. So if I just had this code in the loop, um, the, it would loop so fast because the Game Boy processor will go through that every single cycle of its process, or pretty much, that it will just zip across the screen crazily uncontrollably. So we really need to put a delay in that means that it won't keep doing this as I press it down every millisecond or crazy times a second. It will only do it every a thousand cycles through this, uh, which is, I've just, you can kind of set this to what you think, think feels right. So it does mean if I keep my finger down on a direction, it will keep going in that direction again and again, but it won't be crazy on the screen. So I'm going to put that delay in there. And that should be all the code we need to move it across the screen. So let's try that out. We're going to make again. So dot backslash make. It all compiled, there's no errors or anything, that's fine. Let's reload our ROM. Okay, it's not automatically animating, so we know it's got the new code. So now if I press the left arrow button, it is very slowly. So at the moment it's going too slowly, so I need to lower this value here. So let's set it to 100 maybe. This way you kind of just need to tweak it, whether you're tweaking how far it's moving each time or how long it delays for. There we go, up, down, left and right. So this is a relatively naive implementation at the moment because I can go off the edge of the screen. But all you'd have to do for that is just write some extra code where you're doing this scroll that says if I'm at the edge of the screen in pixels, then stop um, moving any further. But you can see I can move around, it's pretty responsive. We could go and change these to be one and you'll see what difference that makes. So you'll see now he moves quite slowly. If I keep my finger down, he'll move in those directions. So that's all we're going to go through today. Go and have a play, go and try things out and change things around. But you can see it's pretty straightforward to start being able to get some kind of input from your user and use it in your game. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you'll get the next video as soon as it's out. But that's all for now. Thanks a lot.